What's up everybody, GenX Dividend Investor here. In this video, I'm really excited to tell you that within 10 to 15 years, there's a real possibility that you'll have access to technology, which could not only let you potentially live forever, but could also rewind your physical age to be as young as you'd like, which means another reason why you want to invest in good dividend stocks right now. At the end of this video, I'll correct a mistake I made in my last video, and then I'll end things telling you about something funny that just happened to me, so I encourage you to watch until the end. Okay, so I'm actually not joking when I talk about being able to live forever. I mean, I know it sounds crazy, but keep watching and you'll see how I'm being serious. And whether you live for another 20 years or another 200 plus years, you definitely should be thinking about how you can create growing streams of passive income because the investing actions you take today can drastically change your financial realities in the future. The sooner you invest, the more money you can compound and imagine what hundreds of years of compounding would look like. Like for kicks, let's pretend you start at $0 and then you invest 500 bucks a month for 50 years and you make a 7% annualized return your portfolio would grow to a nice $2.7 million. Now let's say you stopped investing, and let's see how your portfolio could grow on its own over a long period of time, like 100 years. What we see is that your $2.7 million portfolio could grow to $2.9 billion from 100 years of compounding. Now let's adjust that for an assumed 3.2% inflation, which is about what the US has averaged over that time, to see what portfolio size would be like in today's dollars. This shows us that 100 years of compounding adjusted for inflation would be equivalent to having a portfolio today worth $121 million, which could be yielding at least $4 million in dividends per year in today's money. The point being that time and compounding will probably make your portfolio grow like a weed, and when we get to the point that technology can increase our longevity, then you definitely want to be capitalizing on the time aspect of compounding portfolio growth. Now, predicting the future accurately is hard, and even experts get things wrong all the time, whether we're talking about the economy or even the weather, but there are some people who have a pretty good track record at estimating where things will go, and specifically in this video I'm going to talk about Ray Kurzweil, who's probably the most famous futurist in the world. And what really blows my mind is what Ray just shared in a TED talk, which is that he predicts in about 10 to 15 years you will not only be able to extend your life in essence forever, but you'll actually be able to age in reverse. So who is Ray Kurzweil? Well, he got his PhD from MIT and went on to start multiple companies, from one which developed the first character recognition system in the 70s to another company which created the first text-to-speech reading machine for the blind. He also started a software company focused on helping individuals with learning disabilities and most recently was the director of engineering at Google, working on AI stuff. Ray's won a variety of notable awards, including a National Medal of Technology and Innovation awarded by the president in 1999, amongst others. He's recognized worldwide for his extensive body of work and contributions to science and technology, particularly in futurism and artificial intelligence. I found this article on futurism.com that said he made 147 predictions since the 1990s and has maintained an astonishing 86% accuracy rate. In 2005, he wrote a book called The Singularity is Near, which included a bunch of his predictions for 2019 and beyond. The word singularity is borrowed from astrophysics, and it refers to a point in space-time, for example inside a black hole, at which the rules of ordinary physics don't apply. In this case, what Ray means is that we're approaching a point in time when technological growth, especially in artificial intelligence, will become so rapid and profound that it will drastically transform and improve human life. Basically, AI will surpass human intelligence and will grow faster and faster, solving problems and creating innovations far beyond our current capabilities. And of course, one of those problems it'll solve has to do with diseases and aging. I mean, it isn't hard to envision that within 5 to 20 years, our progress on treating diseases and aging and tons of other things are going to be radically improved as computation power continues to march forward. Listen to this 90 second clip from a TED talk that Ray just gave a few weeks ago that speaks to longevity technology. And by the end of this decade, as we go into the 2030s, we're going to achieve a new milestone. It's called longevity escape velocity. Let me say that again, because you're going to be hearing a lot about that. Longevity escape velocity. Right now, you go through a year, and you use up a year of your longevity. However, scientific progress is also progressing, which is actually bringing us back. It's giving us cures for diseases, new forms of treatment. So right now, you're getting back about four months. So you lose a year, you get back four months, so you're losing eight months. However, the scientific progress is on an exponential. It's going to get faster and faster. And as we get to the early 2030s, it's between 2029 and 2035, depending on how diligent you are, uh, you're going to get back a full year. So you lose a year, you get back a year. As we actually go past that point, you'll actually get back uh, more than a year, and you'll go backwards in time. Uh, which would be cool. Um, 
Now, some people are concerned we're going to run out of resources. Uh, and actually, if we just went ahead and didn't make any new resources, we would run out of resources, like energy, for example. Uh, but it's not happening in a vacuum. Uh, AI is revolutionizing everything. That's awesome, especially coming from Ray, who's known to be decently good at predicting the future of technology. I liked his term longevity escape velocity, as it reminds me of something I shared in a video a few years ago when I said that dividend investing is like the fuel, or the thrust, of your personal rocket, a rocket which is trying to break free from the gravity of your expenses. Once you have enough fuel and thrust, aka dividend income, to break free from the gravitational forces of your expenses, then you blast away from your old life on Earth and you can fly away faster and faster into space with the freedom of your time. That dividend escape velocity is what I achieved almost four years ago and is something I desperately want everyone else to be able to experience as it's made my last four years of life absolutely amazing. I love the fact that I get to avoid the 9 to 5 grind that I did for so many decades and that I no longer need to work with toxic people or deal with toxic work situations, not to mention I get to do what I want with my time. Anyway, I opened this video saying that predicting the future is hard, so a logical thing to wonder is how good Ray has been at predicting future events. But before I talk about his track record, I ask you to think about how technology has been evolving. Like we all know the computers are getting faster and faster, and with generative AI we're starting to understand how life-changing AI will be to our lives. And just a few years ago, most of us couldn't imagine that computers would soon be creating stories or able to create drawings on demand, and in fact some people thought it would be decades before a computer program could beat the Turing test, and yet OpenAI's ChatGPT was recently found to have passed it, per Stanford researchers. And the Turing test is when a machine exhibits intelligent behavior equivalent to, or indistinguishable from, that of a human. Now, before I elaborate on why I feel that intelligent investing in quality dividend stocks becomes even more important as technological improvement continues, let's quickly look at some of Ray's predictions in the past to see how accurate he's been, as well as share some of his future predictions. So in the 1990s, Kurzweil predicted the explosive growth of the internet. He foresaw that it would become a ubiquitous global network connecting millions of people and providing vast amounts of information. He predicted the rise of portable wireless devices that would give people constant access to information and communication. This prediction has come true with the advent of smartphones and tablets. He accurately forecasted that computers would be able to recognize and respond to human speech and think of today's speech recognition technology used in virtual assistants like Siri, Google Assistant, and Alexa. Kurzweil predicted advances in biotechnology that would lead to personalized medicine where treatments are tailored to individual genetic profiles and this is becoming a reality with the progress in genomics and personalized healthcare. He anticipated the shift from physical media to digital formats for music, books, and other content, and the prevalence of ebooks, streaming services, and digital music stores like Spotify and Apple Music. He foresaw the development of immersive virtual and augmented reality technologies, and today, VR and AR are growing fields with applications in gaming, education, and various industries. He predicted that computing resources and data storage would move to the cloud, allowing people to access information and applications from anywhere, and now cloud computing is a fundamental part of modern technology infrastructure. Beyond those, let's look at some of his predictions he made in his 2005 book. Like he predicted that by 2019, creative AI would be capable of making complex art and music, and I'd say that we just achieved that in 2024, so he was five years too early with that prediction. He thought that autonomous vehicles would dominate the roads by 2019, so that one's a miss, but we are slowly starting to see driverless technology, and I'm guessing within a decade it will dominate the roads. Ray also predicted that computers would be everywhere, embedded in our watches, in the walls, in stores, etc., and I'd say on that he was accurate. Another prediction he had was that language translation machines would be routinely used in conversation when needed, and I'd say that that's starting to happen, so he was a few years too early on that prediction. By 2029, he's predicted that the manufacturing, agricultural, and transportation sectors of the economy would be almost entirely automated, which I think is plausible. He also said that at that point, computers would be capable of autonomously learning and creating new knowledge, which I also agree with. Around then, he thought that AI could claim to be conscious and would openly petition for recognition, which is pretty wild. By 2029, he also thought that a $1,000 computer would be 1,000 times more powerful than the human brain, and I could see that happening as well. He predicted that VR eyeglasses and headphones would be replaced by computer implants, which also makes sense. I mean, speaking of implants and health technology, think about Elon Musk's new venture called Neuralink, which is a company focused on developing brain-machine interfaces. They want to help people with neurological conditions and disorders such as paralysis, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease, spinal cord injuries, etc. And by enabling direct brain-to-computer communication, Neuralink hopes to restore movement and sensory functions. They're working to enhance people's cognitive abilities, memory, and communication, all through a technology which implants ultra-thin wire-like threads into brain tissue, which are connected wirelessly to external devices. 
In fact, two months ago, a 30-year-old quadriplegic man became the first person to receive a Neuralink implant, and this quadriplegic man said the implant has changed his life, as he's been able to control a computer mouse with his thoughts. Watch this 80-second clip for more context to help you better understand how fast medical technology is improving. The first ever user of the Neuralink device. Meet 29-year-old Noland Arbaugh, paralyzed from the shoulders down after a diving accident eight years ago. He describes his new abilities as a kind of telepathy, like something out of the movie Star Wars. Basically, like uh, using the force on a cursor, <laughs> and I could get it to move wherever I wanted, just stare somewhere in the screen, um, which was such a wild experience. Let me just flip the camera on. In a video stream, Arbaugh shows how he plays online chess, directing uh, the cursor to move um, with his I mind. Can... It's all being done with my brain. If y'all can see the cursor moving around the screen, that's that's all me, y'all. Um, it's pretty cool, huh? After years of controversial testing on animals, Neuralink was cleared for human trials. Billionaire Elon Musk hopes to commercialize his device. The chip, about the size of a coin, implanted in the skull, reads neural activity in the brain, beaming it back to a computer, transforming thought into action. So you can operate a computer or a smartphone by simply thinking. So you can think about ways that people can get back abilities that they've lost, but there's no reason not to think outside the box. If you can move a mouse on the screen right now, you can envision a future where you can drive a car with this stuff, right? I mean, this is this could completely change everything. Wow, that just blows my mind. I mean, I'm someone who can no longer drive due to my medical realities, so stuff like this is beyond exciting. Okay, I'll share a few more of Ray's predictions looking further out in time, and then I'll switch to how important investing in quality dividend stocks becomes. So by the 2030s, Ray predicted that mind uploading would become successful and perfected, and humans would become software-based, and I could see that happening kind of like Total Recall. Ray also thought that nanobots would be directly inserted into the brain to control various things, and I could see that happening as well. By the 2040s, he estimated that people would spend the majority of their time in fully merged in virtual reality, and that seems reasonable given what's happening today with online games. And he estimated that non-biological intelligence would be billions of times more capable than biological intelligence, and thus the singularity would happen in 2045. Then by 2049, he estimated that food would be assembled by nanomachines. And finally, by 2099, organic human beings would be in the small minority of intelligent life forms on Earth. So Kurzweil envisions a time when artificial intelligence will easily surpass human intelligence, leading to a merger of human and machine consciousness, which could fundamentally transform society, potentially solving many of humanity's problems, but also posing significant ethical and existential challenges. Like maybe computers will determine that we're the problem, and they decide to take us out. But hey, I'm an optimist, so I think we'll figure things out and end up being able to live forever. And if we do, then investing intelligently becomes even more important. And why do I recommend quality dividend stocks? Well, one reason is this chart I found, which helps explain things. It shows that dividend growers and companies that start to pay dividends have outperformed all of their stocks on average from 1973 until 2021. And then take a look at this chart, which breaks down the total return of the SP500 by stock price appreciation and dividend income for every decade from 1929 until 2019. What we find is that in years where the market does poorly, then dividends really shine. And in years where the market goes up, then dividend stocks also tend to go up. So a focus on dividend stocks can be a more conservative investment approach, yet one which still allows for upside, all of which while you're generating income. Of course, some dividend stocks are also growth stocks, and those tend to pay smaller dividends. I'm talking about tech companies like Apple and Microsoft, and Nvidia and Google and Meta. And then some tickers have good stock price appreciation and dividends, like AbbVie does, though getting good dividends and price appreciation is hard to find, and even harder to maintain. Another reason I promote dividends is what I found in this paper published in 2002 called Dividends and the Three Dwarves, where the author analyzed stock market returns over the previous 200 years and found that dividend stocks tend to outperform on average. Like he found the total compound annual return for stocks over the last two centuries in question was 7.9% per year, which broke down into a 5% return from dividends, a 0.8% return from real growth in dividends, a 1.4% return from inflation, and a 0.6% return from rising valuation levels. Thus, essentially he found that the return from dividends dwarfed the return from all other sources, and so he concluded that dividends are the main source of the real return we should expect from stocks. His finding has been verified more recently by another legendary strategist, James Montier. Montier showed in his 2010 paper called A Man from a Different Time that while in the average single year period, nearly 80% of the market return has been generated by changing valuations, but on a five year time frame, dividend yield and dividend growth account for almost 80% of the return. So TLDR, dividends and dividend growth provided nearly 80% of stock returns. 
Now, just because the last 200 years have been good to dividends doesn't mean the next 200 will, and dividend stocks do poorly and can go bankrupt, and there are some great non-dividend stocks out there. So unless you're retired and want that passive dividend income, I wouldn't recommend avoiding non-dividend stocks due to the data I shared. I mean, my own kids own Amazon and Tesla in their accounts, neither of which pays a dividend, and they also own Microsoft and Apple and such. And of course, I always like to recommend that people focus on broad market ETFs if they're at the stage of their life where they're trying to grow their portfolio. Of course, you can also do a hybrid approach of also investing in some single stocks, and then maybe you go more into dividends as you get closer to retirement, or whatever you want. Now, one thing to understand is that the reason why dividend stocks have tended to outperform is because the typical profile of a dividend-growing company is one that has a stable business model, a strong balance sheet, a history of capital discipline, and management teams committed to returning value to shareholders. So it's not the dividend that magically makes them tend to be a better company, it's just that companies that have been around the block almost always eventually pay a dividend. Leave me a comment if you'd like me to do a video on the life cycle that most companies go through, i.e. explaining why and when companies eventually pay dividends. Okay, and another reason I value dividends so much is because of graphs like this one that shows how dividend payers have helped reduce volatility and have provided some inflation protection. This shows the dividend growth per share for the SP500, which has outpaced inflation over time. I found that in a white paper that said the dividend payers have had about one-third lower volatility than non-dividend stocks, and in decades of high market turmoil, such as the 1930s and 2000s, dividend paying stocks provided a cushion against downside price activity. Thus, dividend payers that consistently grow their dividends can offer better inflation protection than bonds in an inflationary environment. Anyway, either you believe that we'll soon figure out ways to extend our lives significantly, or you don't. If you do believe that, then you gotta invest to create income opportunities down the road. If you don't believe it, then you still gotta invest to create income opportunities down the road. Heck, maybe we'll get universal basic income in the future, which is something that many experts predict will eventually happen, but I'd bet that it would only provide for having a very minimalistic lifestyle, and those that invest will have more. Leave me a comment telling me if you think that within 20 years we'll have longevity tech that lets you live for another 100 years, accidents aside, or if you think it's all crazy talk. Okay, moving on, now I want to correct a mistake I made in my last video. So in it, I was talking about how you can check different time frames of a ticker in Fast Graphs, which I'm an affiliate of, and I was showing you Procter & Gamble, which is one of my favorite consumer staple stocks, and is about 4.25% of my portfolio. I showed that when you select a ticker, it comes up with its default chart, and there's a time frame bar you can use to select the period of time you want to be looking at, and right now it's on max, which means it's showing about two decades of historical data, along with two to three years of forecasted growth. You can also select the period of time by dragging the slider bars on the bottom of the chart. So if you click the 5-year button, it will change the slider bars to be from the end of 2021 until the end of 2026, i.e. it basically sets things to a few years of history plus 2-3 to three years of estimated growth. If you only wanted to look at approximately the last 5 years of history and no forecasted growth, then you could just move the slider bars on the bottom to do that. And hopefully that clarifies the mistake I made. And now to close things off, I want to tell you something funny that my wife just did as we were taking our daily walk. You see, every day we try to get in at least 10,000 steps, and this time she was telling me about this crazy true story documentary she was watching about some woman who was kidnapped and held captive until she managed to escape, and she said there were some big twists in it and I should watch it. I asked her what it was called, but she couldn't remember. So I go, what streaming service was it on? And she says, I don't know, it was on the TV in our bedroom. So I'm like, Hulu, HBO, Netflix, and I rattled off a few others, but she shrugged her shoulders and said she'd Google it. After a few seconds she goes, oops, I guess I shouldn't have Googled naked blonde chick tied up. Needless to say, I cracked up. Okay, now I'll seriously close things off, and I'll do a shout out to Bitstream, who recently grabbed an open Patreon aristocrat seat. And I'll thank Beachy, who also snagged an aristocrat seat. Finally, I'll do a shout out to Mr. Logic Guy, who grabbed a Patreon king seat. King seats give you everything my aristocrat seats get, plus they can do a 30 minute monthly Discord voice call with me to talk about whatever they want. Thanks folks, I really appreciate it. And for everyone else, I'll close this off by recommending that everyone consider using my FastGraphs affiliate link along with my coupon code in the description of this video, as using both will allow new users to get 25% off the first payment, even if they sign up for a full year. I'll also recommend checking out my Seeking Alpha affiliate link, as new users can get discounts for signing up. Plus, take a look at my Patreon seats to see if there are any that you want to sign up for, but since my Patreon Aristocrat and King seats are usually sold out, I'll also recommend that you join my channel membership, which gives you a variety of perks, including a badge icon that has placed buyer comments on my videos and which levels up over time as long as you're a member, and you get the ability to vote on which thumbnails I use for my next video, and you get to watch my videos about a day before I release them publicly. And I'll do a shout out shortly after you join up. But whatever you do, please hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't yet, and click the bell notification. And don't forget to join my free Dividend Discord chat server, which has over 11,000 dividend investors on it from 81 countries around the world. Thanks for watching, stay positive, and I'll talk to you again real soon. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor, and my videos are for entertainment and inspirational purposes only. Investing of any kind involves risk. I'm only sharing my opinions with no guarantee of gains or losses on investments.